I think we best make a start. Uh, the people have been in the habit of filtering in, so I hope that they come in soon. Uh, our first presenter this evening, a gentleman by the name of Bradley Scott Neal, uh, came to us from the uh, University of California. Uh, he has his uh, bachelor's degree from there, his master's degree from Harvard, and then returned to California to be involved in their graduate program in architectural history. He's worked for uh, MLTW, which is Moore, Linden, Turnbull, Whitaker, Turnbull, and for Tim Vreeland in California. And he's going to talk to us this afternoon about his some of his work with Vreeland, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, was what? The first island shopping center. Professor Scott Neal, Bradley. Can you hear me? I had a whole series of um, introductory comments and jokes referring to being the uh, warm-up pack to Professor Wallace's uh, lecture, which will follow mine. Um, my show is not going to be a lecture at all, really. It's essentially a presentation of some 76-odd slides which record a design process that I went through uh, about four years ago on a very large shopping center in Florida um, when I was working as Tim Vreeland's design assistant. Um, but before I start showing you the slides, I'd like to preface the presentation with a short comment. Um, Professor Stan Gaeta summarized his Land Plus West presentation uh, about two weeks ago by remarking that it was actually a set of examples um, dealing with the agony and the ecstasy of private practice. Uh, the project that I'm going to be showing you <clears throat> is a very good example of what Stan was referring to. Uh, it wasn't built, nor will it ever be built. Um, after the uh, process that you'll be seeing was completed, uh, the project went through a whole series of changes and compromises, defaults, and so forth for almost seven months. Uh, and finally, it died. Uh, ergo, uh, agony. <clears throat> um, but more of that at the end. What I'm going to be showing you essentially is the, the ecstasy part of practice. Uh, that experience that uh, short of actually seeing the building built is probably the most exciting. And that is designing the building. And with that, I'll begin, I think. Let me begin with the site. Uh, the site was essentially 35, can you hear me now? I wasn't, OK. The site is essentially 35 acres of uh, landfill um, in the foreground here. Uh, in Hollandale, Florida, which is 30 miles north of Miami Beach, um, <clears throat> along the intercoastal waterway. Uh, as you can see, the side is, uh, has two adjacent sides are, are fronting water. Uh, the other two sides have streets um, for side access, essentially. Our client uh, for the job was the Rouse Company. Uh, who were the developers of the new town in Columbia, Maryland, that you might be familiar with. Uh, they were at that time very, very highly regarded in the shopping center development game. Um, they had at that point done some 25 odd shopping centers, uh, not odd shopping centers, but 25 actually very good shopping centers in most cases from a design standpoint. And also uh, each one of them was quite successful commercially. Uh, in fact, we were told at the time by a friend who was working for Welton Beckett, uh, big shopping center architects in Los Angeles, who'd done some work with Rouse, that uh, if we had to get our hands dirty in the shopping center design business, uh, they were the ideal client to be working with. Um, <clears throat> they were at the time considered to be the most enlightened shopping center developers around. So essentially, we at the beginning, we were faced with the a uh, very nice situation of having a marvelous waterfront site to deal with and, and a client uh, who wanted to try something very unique on this particular site. 
We were both very anxious to get our hands dirty at that time. I was uh, fresh out of graduate school in the East, and I'd spent a boring, very boring month in a uh, small design stable in a large 200-man office in San Diego. Uh, Tim was then chairman of the Department of Architecture at UCLA, uh, had had a private practice in LA that was quite small, hadn't had the opportunity to work on a sizable project since he left uh, Philadelphia in 1965. Uh, he called me for an interview. Um, he'd, he'd been looking around for someone to work with him on this project. Uh, he'd gotten my name from someone. He called me. I interviewed uh, quite happily and was fortunate enough to get the job with him. So we then started. And by the way, the slide on the right is a picture of uh, the Ross Company's own shopping center at Columbia that they designed in-house for themselves. It's quite nice, uh, quite exciting place to be. It actually works, too, quite well as a shopping center. So anyway, that's the kind of imagery that they were interested in. Um, <clears throat> and again, our site was quite lovely. Um, and posed many possibilities, which I'll get into later, uh, for doing something very unique in shopping center design at this point. The program that we were given for the project uh, was essentially made up of three department stores, one of 80,000 square feet, two of 60,000 square feet for a total of 200,000 square feet, plus about 300,000 square feet of retail shops in between the big stores. We immediately went at it, uh, essentially from the standpoint of images and concepts that we thought might be appropriate for a site like this. The main thing we wanted to avoid was the, the great monolithic sort of back alley uh, scale of most shopping centers uh, that we, we all know quite well, the Muncie Mall being a good example. We started with uh, typical uh, uh, Swiss lake villages uh, broken down in scale, actually out in the water. Um, clearly defined single elements pieced together. Uh, we also had, of course, in our backs of our minds, as most architects do, the image of Mykonos, uh, gleaming sort of crystalline elements all stepping down to the water. Uh, we also had, of course, the romance and fantasy of, of uh, most waterfront life that we were at least hoped to be uh, achieving in our scheme. <coughs> Uh, the image of Venice on the left, of course, was very strong. Also very standard, or plastic, fantastic, actually, commercial attempts at, at waterfront shopping in Los Angeles. We'd seen one, this one, at Marina del Rey on the right, <clears throat> which was um, interesting from the standpoint of the fact that it did draw people. People were using those, those New England... Uh, uh, storefronts, uh, <clears throat> shops on the water, um, and it was typically an active place, although we wanted to do something a little more interesting than that. In addition to the notion of, of waterfront life, uh, of, of broken down crystalline like elements, we, we wanted the shopping center to be a focus for the Hollandale area, or the greater Hollandale area. Uh, it had to be an attractive place to, uh, to draw many people. And if the main image uh, in our minds then, of course, was the Piazza uh, San Marco in Venice again uh, with large campanile. Uh, we thought we'd probably need at some point some major focal element within the center so that uh, it would draw people both in boats and in cars from the surrounding high-rise uh, Miami Beach-like apartment houses. Uh, this part of Florida is filled with retired uh, people with lots of leisure time on their hands. Uh, lots of money to spend. Uh, these were the people that uh, Ross was after. We thought if, if we provided a, um, <clears throat> a very active and exciting place for them to spend a lot of time, uh, that the shopping center would be a success. Uh, after the brainstorming period of images, uh, we produced a series of flashcards for the client, uh, dealing with the essential concepts that we were thinking of at the time. Uh, these really uh, break down into being a uh, clear orientation to the water, uh, a series of, of, of pavilion-like elements breaking down the whole scale of the typical shopping center in some way, uh, and the lower line of drawings in the middle, the idea of a, of a treasure island, or a, uh, <clears throat> a place surrounded completely by water was in the back of our minds. 
uh, and this will reappear later, as you'll see. Uh, but essentially, smaller elements, um, faceted storefronts, uh, uh, and waterfront orientation were the basic ideas. Uh, the problem with all those ideas was that we also had to come to terms with um, standard shopping center formulas. <clears throat> Uh, as you know, and I tried to diagram some up here, but I don't think we have to look at those. Uh, <clears throat> they really break down to uh, being, uh, well, you know, the old standard Gruen dumbbell scheme with uh, department stores on each end of a long mall that you enter in the middle of uh, so that uh, to maximize the interaction between stores so that the retail spaces that line up between the uh, large department stores can can share in the, uh, the, man, the magnetic draw that these stores have. Um, we had to deal with that with three department stores and also try to relate the, the scheme in general to the water, which was very, very difficult to come to terms with. Neither one of us had uh, designed, uh, done anything involved, involving shopping center design before. Uh, we knew the basic diagrams and we then played with trying to place them on the site. Uh, hopefully in relation, sh in some relation to the water and still uh, provide access somehow from cars, uh, for cars and people uh, from the non-water sides, the road sides. The first diagram we came up with essentially was a Y-shaped scheme, which doesn't read very well on that slide. Um, <clears throat> a scheme which didn't really relate to the water at all, uh, except that the one department store is pointing out uh, uh, towards the marina, which you might recall from the site slide, uh, that really represents scheme, not scheme two, scheme one, essentially, in the, in the diagram here. Just placement of the big elements on the site, uh, where to place those so that water uh, people will be pulled uh, both to and from them and out to the water in some way. We then went through a long process of coming to terms with um, that idea, and also coming to terms with the idea of, of uh, pavilion-like, a pavilion-like geometric discipline to, to give order to this scheme in some way. Um, <clears throat> these diagrams show that progression based on this first diagram we had. Uh, the problem basically with it was that it just didn't relate to the water at all. Again, playing with it a little bit more, the infill here now, the retail shops, which are broken down into smaller um, squared elements, uh, we then tried pushing that out onto the water. Uh, that made absolutely no sense at all in terms of uh, uh, the Rouse Company, because they, fe they felt that the water itself and, uh, and retail shops alone couldn't draw people uh, uh, out there, although we, we, we disagreed to, to, uh, to some uh, a little bit with that, uh, we decided that they were probably right, and we didn't really like the diagram at all anyway. So uh, we then went to a, a more direct uh, axial sort of setup, just pointing the whole circulation system out to the water, out to the upper right-hand corner of the site, um, <clears throat> to try to borrow from both the intercoastal waterway that went down the uh, <clears throat> eastern side of the site and the marina, which was up at the uh, northern side of the site. Basing that, using that uh, axial idea uh, with a broken, uh, uh, a broken storefront uh, facade, uh, uh, line of, line of shops uh, leading out to the water, we then decided that we needed um, for Rouse to orient all of the magnetism of the uh, department stores out on the water as well. So we tried to concentrate all the pull out there, the water and department stores, and then, and then leave <clears throat> one single department store down in the parking lot. Uh, this scheme looks a little clumsy. The department stores can't really work this way. Uh, you're wasting a department store in, 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 in a marketing sense because you, can't, you aren't sharing uh, retail space. So we began to open up this scheme on the end, open it up to the water, separate the department stores a little bit more, uh, and used a, you might be able to see, a little focal element, uh, the equivalent of a campanile out at the end at the water. Um, <clears throat> At this point, we were beginning to move in the direction that uh, we would finally uh, uh, land in. You might, if you can see it, there's also a sectional diagram uh, showing uh, this scheme in section, 
Uh, basically, it amounts to splitting the levels of the mall to concentrate most of the shops and, and all of the, most of the department stores out at the end towards the water. Two stories up at that end, one story down at the bottom in the parking lot. And then we finally, we finally made it. We decided, aha, why not bring water into the mall? The scheme on the left is a, is a first, a kind of tentative uh, uh, approach to that. Uh, we decided that yes, the Treasure Island scheme might be nice. Um, it would give the whole project uh, uh, an interesting kind of approach. Um, so we floated the whole project in a reflecting pool uh, with a strict geometric form, which we hoped would give order to however we broke up the individual uh, retail shops in terms of their geometry. Uh, we introduced water, as I said, up at the uh, on the marina side of the uh, scheme itself in a very tentative way. We then <clears throat> evolved that into a stronger sort of uh, splitting of the mall, bringing the water all the way down into the center of the mall. And from here, we, we really began to uh, 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 look at things in detail. The first image we thought of in terms of ordering the geometry of the retail stores was the clearest one that we'd seen. Uh, and that's, that's the Trenton bathhouse uh, by Lou Kahn, who uh, Tim had worked for for some five years in Philadelphia. In fact, he'd worked on this project. Um, <clears throat> this was the first scheme we tried. Notice how you can break up a very, uh, a very monolithic uh, building uh, with a series of elements quite simply um, by using this kind of geometry. We tried it. Uh, we didn't like it because it was a bit stiff for us. Uh, wasn't quite playful enough. Wasn't quite. Uh, didn't give us enough opportunity for. Uh, multi-directions and um, really gleaming sort of crystalline elements at different levels. So we continued to explore geometries, again give some discipline to the project. Uh, here are a series of drawings um, which demonstrate that exploration. We then reached a point where the diagram itself was resolved in terms of geometry. Um, we presented this to the client. Let me go back. At this point, though, we decided that uh, that end department store was a little clumsy. Uh, the axial orientation to the marina uh, was probably too strong. We weren't really making any use of the great waterway on the eastern side of the site. So we shifted the balance of the scheme to the right. Uh, also balanced the department store geometry so that we were borrowing both from the marina itself in terms of pull and from the uh, <clears throat> intercoastal waterway, just as a diagram. So this was it. We made a mass model of the thing, uh, as you see on the left, which demonstrates the <clears throat> different level changes at this point. If you look at the, also the diagram on the right in section of how, the things, are how things are organized vertically, we decided that we'd have to uh, pull people out to the waterfront by putting stores, retail stores, under the actual department stores, which was something that uh, is unheard of in most, most shopping center design. Uh, we needed it to uh, make use of that waterfront. So we made that proposal. As you can see on the, on the upper right-hand corner of the section on the right, the department store is floating above uh, retail shops below. The mall itself is split in half at the middle. Uh, <clears throat> it's split level, so that at the center, if you look in the model, um, you're, at a, you're at a level where the uh, uh, transition between the two stories in front of you is quite, quite um, uh, uh, easy. And if you're sitting in the plaza or standing in the plaza, you get a good view of the marina at that level. Then went through a series of uh, studies to see what it actually looked like in terms of massing. We then presented the client with a diagram which described how the parking might work. We did have to park some 2,500 cars on this site. Uh, it was a difficult problem to resolve. Most shopping centers uh, float in a sea of cars. We only had two sides uh, that we could work with if we wanted to use the waterfront. Um, <clears throat> so it posed a difficult problem. At this stage, we hadn't really considered wrapping uh, uh, retail all the way around the uh, department stores themselves. Eventually we will. Um, the diagram in terms of colors, the black is retail, the 
light orange uh, are secondary magnets, the bright uh, true oranges are the department stores, and the yellow is the mall itself. Whoops. More studies. <clears throat> Here's our first real massing model study of what a section of the mall might look like, uh, how the mall levels relate to the water, how they relate to each other, uh, how the massing of the, of the department store roofs relates to the geometry of the retail store roofs. Um, you can see a detailed drawing here of uh, how, those, how those roofs might work. More detailed study dealing with the uh, the storefront signage, uh, the actual structure of the individual store units. Um, from these drawings, a big model was made later that you'll see. The study models based on, on, on that, uh, that last pass at the, at the storefronts themselves and the roof geometry for the retail. More detailed study of how it all goes together. Uh, at this point, we were pretty well satisfied with the scheme. Uh, the only thing that uh, bothered us were the, were the department stores. The geometry was uh, too massive. Uh, they tended to over-dominate the rest of the scheme. So we began studying the geometry of the department stores, the biggest elements. And uh, our initial response was really to look at them as um, ocean liners that were moored here. And we developed a a formal geometry for those and a, and a graphic uh, system for them to, that made them look that way, at least in our eyes at the time. There's an elevation, the, the last uh, sort of design, uh, schematic design elevation that we did at this point. So once we reached this point, we were on our way, we thought. We began studying details uh, of the major features of the mall. Uh, on the upper left here, the um, observation tower. On the right, uh, a fountain which was going to surround that uh, reflecting pool that everything was sitting in to, to provide a very, very pleasant uh, kind of experience for people approaching from the parking lot side. Uh, in the center there, uh, a sort of 19th century um, suspended bridge uh, which connected the two um, <clears throat> terminal department stores uh, uh, over the marina itself that we'd introduced in the center of the mall. Uh, on the lower left here is a vision of a golden galleon that we thought we might put into the reflecting pool. Unfortunately, we didn't have room for it. Uh, and on the lower right, again, we're beginning to study <clears throat> how we might begin changing uh, uh, levels, uh, roof geometries and so forth vertically to begin giving it that playful feeling that, uh, uh, that we thought it should have. A more detailed version of the observation tower itself studies in plan of how the, uh, how the shops would actually work. Uh, <clears throat> on the left, you can see the entrance to the department stores out at the ends, uh, which have to be entered by the, on the first level in some fashion, how that works against uh, their delivery uh, system, parking on the right, reflecting pool on the left, how the individual elements um, would be sitting in the pool, and again, how the shops might work, service corridors in pink, um, <clears throat> on the right, a, another major feature uh, which you find at the end of the bridge across the marina, which is a great uh, um, sort of uh, aquarium arena uh, which, which demonstrates all of the sea life in the greater Florida Gold Coast region. Uh, <clears throat> and again, how that might work. And finally, we arrived at the, at the scheme to present to Rouse's uh, <clears throat> possible clients. At this time, he was looking for um, very, very uh, sort of luxury-oriented department store clients uh, to appeal to those kinds of people in, in the Gold Coast area who could afford to, say, bring a boat to go shop. Uh, we prepared these drawings and the model and drawings that you will be seeing following these uh, for a meeting he had after we'd spent about six months on the job with Saks Fifth Avenue, I Magnin, Bonwit Teller. Detailed versions of how the mall and uh, retail shops begin to relate to the water, uh, both on the marina side 
And on the entry side, the reflecting pool here, you can see the service corridors articulated by uh, uh, people moving goods. Uh, you can see that we were hoping we could introduce light uh, through these roofs um, <clears throat> into the front of each store. Uh, this, this later was to come out, um, but essentially we kept the idea of at least maintaining all of the, uh, all of the mechanical equipment uh, <clears throat> under these roofs as they bordered uh, the retail uh, stores, both front and back. And the drawing showing a detail of the tower itself, how levels are changed uh, from the plaza, and an axonometric showing essentially the same thing from above. <clears throat> Renderings were made, a great model was made, uh, and I'm going to take you through both so you can see what the scheme uh, evolved into. Uh, this is the approach from the water by boat. The approach on the right is by car. As you can see, it looks like uh, a whole series of boats have landed here. Uh, we were hoping that the shopping center um, would look as nautical as, as possible. And the ride, it takes on a whole different character. It really looks like the circus has come to town, which was fine with us. Um, <clears throat> as you approach it again by boat and by car, passing over, um, passing by and over the reflecting pool uh, with its fountains on a gradual ramp to lead you up to the plaza level. Uh, as you come in, you come in by shops and also community-oriented facilities, uh, health, health facilities and meeting facilities. As you approach, the tower becomes more and more prominent, both from the uh, water side and from the car side. And you can begin to see uh, a little bit of Mykonos in the geometry of the roofs. These were to be um, white porcelainized enamel, which shine in the sun. You could see them from uh, both your approach and from your luxury apartment uh, Miami Beach uh, high-rise living space that looked down on this thing. We were very concerned with a view from above uh, because we thought that it would eventually be surrounded. Uh, it was, at that time, partially surrounded by high-rise apartments. Uh, <clears throat> so that was a great concern, too. And with the, um, our Campanile, our observation tower, uh, this would uh, also mean that people would be looking down on the, on, on the project constantly. Closer in now, you get some feeling for the life uh, that we were hoping uh, would go on in our shopping center. Uh, <clears throat> again, another view of the, of the roof geometry, the pool, uh, the parking. One thing I didn't mention was that, whoops, I keep going the wrong way. If you can see on the right-hand slide, just at the right edge of the slide, a parking deck. Um, we tried to conceal the fact that we had to produce a double level parking deck in this scheme. Uh, so we had to warp the ground a little bit uh, to do that. And if, as we go, you'll see that the parking deck begins to disappear as you approach. Uh, it slopes up to the second level uh, department stores at the ends of the scheme. Your view on the left getting closer in to the plaza itself, a view from above, uh, the, the view that you would have from an airplane or a little closer in uh, from the observation tower of the roof geometry. Yeah, here's the uh, aquarium on the left uh, with dolphins jumping. And on the right again, an interior view in the model uh, showing all the basic elements, the aquarium on the right, the bridge in the center, uh, the observation tower behind, dominating everything. Boats, which are going to be a very important part of the life we felt would go on here. Uh, again, the elements in model, closer into the plaza. We, we hope that th th this plaza step steps right down into the water. We, we were trying to provide an edge uh, to the mall that would really allow people to sit down and kick their feet in the water if they wanted to. Um, we're beginning to pull away from the scheme on the right in model as we get closer in in the drawings. You, you can begin to see the parking decks here on the right. Uh, these drawings, by the way, were made by Carlos Denise, a professional render in Los Angeles. 
the actual size of the drawing was about uh, 24 inches wide by about 12 inches high. So you can see the detail involved in, in his pen work uh, was just incredible. He did a beautiful job. The model was produced not by us, but by uh, Virginia Green of San Francisco. It's worth about $8,000. Um, it now sits in Tim's office in Beverly Hills. Um, another view. You can see the way the parking decks gradually ramp up to form a second level. <laughs> Let me go back. Uh, this is the, the uh, project in the intercoastal waterway uh, system of Hollandale. Um, <clears throat> When we finally reach this point, the image on the left, uh, the fantasy that we had on the right, the project died, um, essentially died. <clears throat> it was presented, the drawings and model uh, that you just saw were presented to the clients in New York, whose first comment was, um, my, that's a marvelous design, but why should we locate in Hollandale, Florida, Mr. Ross? And Mr. Ross couldn't answer the question. Uh, <clears throat> at that time, there would, had just been built about 30, 30 miles outside of Hollandale, um, a Neiman Marcus department store, which was uh, pulling in the kind of people that Ross was looking for in his shopping center. Uh, he couldn't convince uh, the initial uh, department store people that he was looking for uh, to come in and compete with Neiman Marcus. So we then went through a progressive uh, series of uh, redesigns to appeal to uh, different kinds of department store clients. Uh, the first thing that went was the marina. The next thing that went was the reflecting pool. Uh, the whole thing closed up. One department store went. It began to look more and more like the Muncie Mall. Uh, finally, um, he couldn't convince uh, two department stores to move in, so he went after one plus a very large restaurant chain in Florida. Uh, they went. He sold the property uh, and we're left with these images alone. And with that, I'll end it. <laughs>